Washington was a visionary who introduced many new ideas into the colonial system of agriculture. He took good care of the soil in which he grew his crops. He knew that healthy soil produced healthy plants. Here's how he did it. Back in Washington's day, most Virginia plantation owners grew tobacco as their main cash crop. In his early years as a farmer, Washington grew tobacco too. But when he saw that tobacco used up valuable nutrients in the soil, he replaced tobacco with wheat, which was not as damaging to his soil. In caring for his soil, Washington also developed a clever way to rotate his crops. Many 18th century farmers already practiced a three-year crop rotation, planting their crops in different fields each year so that the soil would not become exhausted. But Washington practiced a seven-year crop rotation system he designed to improve his soil and crop production. Here's how it worked. No crop, except for grasses, was ever planted in the same field for more than one year in a row. When grasses were planted, sheep and other livestock were pastured in the field so that their manure would help to fertilize the soil. By rotating the crops and making sure that every field lay unplanted for at least one year, Washington kept his soil healthy. Soon he was growing over 60 different crops on his five Mount Vernon farms. Besides wheat, which he sold to make money, he grew many acres of corn for feeding his slaves, his livestock, and his family. Washington also experimented with using different soil enhancers or natural fertilizers to keep his soil healthy. He tried adding animal manure, creek mud, marl, fish heads, and green manure, which was buckwheat or clover grown in a field and then plowed back into the ground. Each of these enhancers contained organic nutrients that fed and improved the soil. Through careful experimentation and observation, Washington learned what worked best for his crops. Animals played an important role in farming at Mount Vernon. Along with oxen, horses, and mules, which were used to do heavy field work, Washington raised hogs and sheep for food and wool. No part of an animal went to waste. Besides giving milk, cattle provided meat, as well as leather to make shoes, saddles, harnesses, and other useful items. Chickens provided meat and eggs. And, as we've already learned, animal manure was used as fertilizer. Oxen are steers that are trained to work in fields. They are much stronger than a horse or mule and were used to haul logs, remove stumps, and pull plows and carts. Mules were important because they are strong and need to be fed and watered less often than horses. A mule's parents are a donkey and a horse. Washington thought very highly of mules. He bred them himself and urged other farmers to use them. Washington's hogs ran loose through the forests. In the fall, they were captured, penned, and fattened for slaughter. They provided the plantation with ham, bacon, sausage, chitterlings, and lard, as well as bristles for making toothbrushes. Fences also played an important role in farming at Mount Vernon. Washington used several kinds of fences, each with a different purpose. Small and movable hurdle fences were used to keep animals in an area for a short time to graze and manure the fields. Sturdy, permanent post and rail fences were used to mark boundary lines and to keep animals on or off the fields. Wattle fences, made of tightly woven branches, were used to pen chickens and other small animals and to keep hungry foxes away. Sturdy, easy-to-move rail or zigzag fences were used to enclose fields. Because of their flexible design, they could be laid around trees, rocks, and other obstacles. So, fences at Mount Vernon had two main purposes, keeping domestic animals in and keeping wild animals out. Fences protected domestic animals from getting lost, stolen, or attacked by predators, and also kept them in areas where the fields needed fertilizing with their manure. Fences also kept animals like deer and rabbits from eating crops, and foxes and mountain lions from attacking livestock. Besides soil, animals, and fences, good tools were essential to the success of Washington's farming operation. Fascinated with technology, Washington was always looking for new tools and methods. His most important invention was a 16-sided treading barn, which he designed to improve the threshing of wheat the process that removes the wheat berry from the husk after the wheat has been harvested. Traditionally, this had been done out of doors, on the ground, by hand, using a tool called a flail. Among its other drawbacks, the flail method was dirty and labor-intensive. Washington's 16-sided barn was a great improvement. The barn had two levels, and the harvested wheat was laid out on the floor of the second level. The floor was made of wooden slats, with a gap 
of one and one half inches between each slat. Horses and mules would trot around the barn, the weight of their hooves cracking open the wheat husks. Once separated from the husks, the wheat berries would fall through the slats to the level below, where they were gathered, cleaned, and sent to the mill to be ground into flour. George Washington's farming practices were meant to conserve and improve the land, and to make the most of all the resources he had at hand in order to increase the productivity of his farms. His vision for his country and his personal interests were connected. He believed it was his duty to find the most productive agricultural methods and to share his findings with small farmers who did not have the land and resources he had at Mount Vernon.